I feel that we are doing something that is so important, that is awesome, it is almost purifying. Surely it is God's wish that men not wage wars of aggression. The proof here is absolutely overwhelming. I would have never believed that men could be so evil. I sat down to read the first letter and this eerie sensation came over me. I looked at the calendar on my desk and it was July 28, 1995. It was 50 years to the day that he wrote the first letter to my mother. It's July 28, 1945. And this first paragraph, God, it just really hit me. He says, my dearest, if my letters seem lengthy and detailed, you will understand that first of all, I'm trying to string out my time with you. I consider it such, for while you are on my mind at all times during the day, at letter writing time, I have you alone with no interruptions. And so reading the letters uh, became a very emotional trip in many ways. I grew up in a generation where you weren't as visible about parents' affection for each other. My first reaction was reading, who's this guy talking to my mother this way? I mean, uh, it was it just, it was these great love letters. I mean, on one level, it was, a, my parents were long since deceased when I read the letters. And it gave me a, this incredible uh, perspective on my father. If I've done anything worthwhile, I owe much of it to you and all the motivation for it. I'm lonesome tonight, lonesome for you. Yet I know that when this task is done, I will return to find you waiting in loveliness. Until then, you and I will keep our faith and our love together. Now, people had spoken about crimes against humanity in the past, in the First World War, particularly poison gassing, sinking of hospital ships, etc. Uh, but we had never reached a point where certainly a head of state could be tried, and that was the reason why there were no trials after the First World War against the Kaiser, which were initiated and then let fall because of the ex post facto argument. And Justice Jackson put it best when he said, the time has come for the law to take a step forward. It was not in the creation of new law, which would have been ex post facto, but in the articulation and clarification of what had been evolving as a new definition of crimes which were so horrendous that they shocked the conscience of mankind. And these were called crimes against humanity. The privilege of opening the first trial in history for crimes against the peace of the world imposes a grave responsibility. The wrongs which we seek to condemn and punish have been so calculated, so malignant and so devastating that civilization cannot tolerate their being ignored because it cannot survive their being repeated. That far great, great nations nation stung, stung with injury and flushed with victory stayed the hand of vengeance by voluntarily submitting their captive enemies to the judgment of the rule of law, the greatest tribute that power ever paid to reason. Uh, Wilhelm Keitel. Ich bekenne mich nicht schuldig. Well, my dearest, it must be very clear that I'm enjoying this assignment. Nothing can be of more interest. If I do no more than talk with these characters, hear their stories, question them about the past events, observe them as men, then my time has been and will be very well spent. Books, volumes will be written about all of this, for it is history. I was at the office today, questioning Field Marshal Keitel. We are getting along very well together. Sometimes I found myself liking him and feeling sorry for him. I don't ask him if he'd 
take a note he'd written to his wife to make sure she got it and so forth. He said, yeah, sure, he would. He found them to be bright, more than competent individuals, and yet they, they were absolutely demonic in their devotion to Hitler. My father never got over that, and he never got over it. He always say, don't let anyone ever tell you that the average German adult didn't know what was going on. They blamed everything on Hitler, and it was not going well for the prosecution. And then they showed the film Nazi concentration camps, which was put together by the U.S. Signal Corps, that was really the most emotionally arresting and powerful moment in the Nuremberg trials. Prosecution for the United States will at this time present to the tribunal with its permission a documentary film on concentration camps. This is by no means the entire proof which the prosecution will offer with respect to the subject of concentration camps. But this film represents in a brief and unforgettable form an explanation of what the words concentration camp imply. It's very painful. It provides a visual immediacy to the Holocaust. Jackson simply showed it without a lot of fanfare. He didn't really present, like, what is this evidence for? But it had a big impact on the trial itself, on the judges and on the defendants, because what it did was to convey the enormity of the German crimes in the Holocaust. And there was, at the heart of the prosecution, a deep disagreement on how to prosecute the Nazi high command, which led to some people walking off the trial who were prosecutors. General Donovan, who was a member of the prosecutorial team, he wanted to bring prominent witnesses. He wanted testimony. Robert Jackson thought this was a high risk strategy. He said, Gehring is a symbol of Nazism. It would be tactically very ill-advised to give him the microphone and allow a Nazi effectively to take over the testimony during the trial. And he said, much better to bring documents. Documents, memos, reports, reports from the Einsatzgruppen, who were the killing groups in the German military. Robert Jackson prevailed. General Donovan quit in a fit of pique and walked away. And it was a document trial. The trial wasn't going terribly well. The press was losing interest, actually, because it was very data-driven. And he said, look, we're losing the public's interest in this case. I mean, in the, in the, it's, it's recitation of data. We gotta, we gotta try a case like you try a case in a county court back in the United States. You gotta give something people to remember. So he, he uh, the next day, he put a table in the middle of the courtroom with a cloth over it. This exhibit, which is uh, on the table, is a human head with the skull bone removed, shrunken, stuffed, and preserved. The Nazis had one of their many victims decapitated after having had him hanged apparently for fraternizing with a German woman and fashioned this terrible ornament from his head. And there was the shrunken head, <clears throat> which was the paperweight on the commandant of the Buchenwald concentration camp. And he said, and that's who they are. That's who they are. And you can hear the gasps in the courtroom. <laughs> As a result of those trials, the world was told that aggression is the supreme international crime. War making itself, which had been legal in the past, was declared to be an international crime that was a great step forward in the evolution of civilized behavior. It also taught that law must apply equally to everyone. At the same time, it emphasized that the law must be flexible enough to change with the times in order to meet the needs of the society which is supposed to bind. I will never do anything as worthwhile again. Nothing will ever really be as important. Someday the boys will point to it, I hope, 
and be proud and inspired by it. Perhaps they will be at the bar themselves, and perhaps they will invoke this president and call upon the law we make here. That is reward enough for any lawyer. This is something I think that can make us special uh, at this university in a way that, uh, and we hope others do it. I'm not suggesting we be the only one, but maybe we can get others to do something like this themselves. So that human rights is not just something we think happens overseas. It's about domestic human rights. It's about civics. It's about understanding what your rights are. It's hard to defend something you don't know exists. The conclusion that I come to for the young people here, we are definitely on the move. There is an awakening of the human conscience which began at Nuremberg. There is an eagerness on the part of the public and of youth. So we are definitely moving forward, but it's a slow movement. And it depends upon the enthusiasm of the public to make it move forward more quickly. The torch will soon fall from our hands and it's got to be picked up by younger people I hope there are some younger people out there. And the only advice I can give you is pick it up. Run with it, carry it proudly. Walk with it if you must, crawl with it if you must. Because the light of civilization that was lit at Nuremberg now rests in your hands.